morning you guys i am going to be doing a little day in the life of how i spend time with the lord now my mornings are super crucial for me because this is when i spend my quiet time with the lord this is when i spend my mornings just praying with him so i thought i'd kind of just take you along of what is going on in my head and the conversation i'm having with the lord Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day. Thank you for another day to be able to breathe and to have life, Lord. I pray that you help guide me and give me wisdom to be the best mom that I can be, Lord. I pray that you show me and lead me and direct me exactly to do what my children need that day. For each individual one, Lord, I pray that you gave me peace and that I'm able to embody that. I pray that you give me patience with every little tantrum, with every little tone with any little thing that might make me want to be impatient lord i pray that you give me the patience that i need to show them love and grace and your mercy and i'm able to embody and show my children what christ is like lord i pray that you help me be gentle with my words be gentle with my speech be, be gentle with every piece of my body lord um i pray that you help me be and show me how to be the example that my kids need lord i pray that you just show up in ways throughout our day, throughout the mundane, that we're able to be just so thankful for all the little things that you have done. Thank you for these dishes, Lord. I know that means that we have full bellies, and thank you for running water, Lord. We're so thankful for these little tiny things that is so easy for to take for granted, but I'm so thankful, and I'm able to see the little miracles that happen throughout the day, Lord. I pray that you help me see things through the beauty and through the eyes that you see them that the little inconveniences are seen as little blessings and little moments of pause and break lord that little moments of trial are seen as moments where endurance can be built and endurance can be built and strengthened lord i pray that you will just be with us in every moment of today and we're so thankful for today Amen. hello good morning you guys welcome back to today's video i wanted to do a little what my day looks like with jesus and i wanted this to feel a little bit different than any of my other videos and maybe any other videos that you have seen when people spend time with the lord my husband and i did a podcast on this topic really recently so i will link that down below but for me, once I became a mom, it really challenged my faith in the sense of how I was going to possibly spend time with the Lord and carve out the time and what that even looked like. And it has been such a blessing because that has challenged me and encouraged me to use so many other different biblical disciplines that I wasn't previously using. And it has truly transformed the way that I view the Lord, my time with the Lord, what that looks like, what that doesn't look like. I kind of wanted to walk you guys through that today in case you're in a season right now where you're really busy, you're barely running on any sleep, and you just feel like you just want to spend time with the Lord and you don't know what that looks like. So if you are a mother, I just want to encourage you with this. Do not try to fit your square of what your time with the Lord looked like before you had kids into your new triangle of what your time with the Lord looks like. It's like, I feel like that is the best analogy I can give is like a puzzle piece that's trying to fit into a shape that's not the right shape. That is how you should view you trying to revert back and trying to get back to how your time with the Lord was. For my first year of motherhood, I remember that was such a challenge for me and I was unwilling to learn new disciplines. I was unwilling to adapt to the fact that I would not be able to read five pages of my Bible every day. Like it was really difficult for me and I became really stubborn. But in that time, my time with the Lord and my prayer became so radically changed that had I not been challenged in that way, I would not have developed this new like skill set of prayer and just like it's been really beautiful. So I want to start off with that encouragement. But I'm gonna walk you guys through the day. So as you saw in the morning, my quiet time is my prayer time. Quiet time is one of the biblical disciplines. Prayer and spending time with the Lord. All throughout scripture, when Jesus was on earth, he would go away and have his quiet time. He would step out of what everyone was doing and what everyone else was to go spend time with the Father. And I think that's a really important thing that we need to also get into the habit of doing. For me, that happens first thing in the morning and I have to wake up before my family. Now, there are seasons where this is easier and there are seasons where this doesn't happen first thing in the morning and this happens at night once everyone goes to bed or during nap time. 
but it is something that I found that is so crucial and so important. I am a morning person, and so for me, I'm more drawn to doing this in the morning just because I will pray for each child each day. I will pray for myself in my motherhood. I will pray for certain things that are going on. I'll pray for my husband, um, and I just really use that time to just communicate and talk to the Lord and just be silent with him and enjoy his presence with nothing more than just me and him. And this is normally when I'll get like my morning chores done, which I feel like is so fun to me because I'm able to really see the beauty in the mundane. I'm able to really enjoy the blessing that it is to do these chores that really do not feel like chores. I'm just so thankful for each clothing item that I'm folding. I'm so thankful for the dishes that were dirty because that means I got to feed my family. Like when I spend this time with the Lord in silence and in prayer, I have such a heart of gratitude and it's just the most beautiful way to start off my day. So anyway, now next thing on like my list would be to read my beautiful Bible. But today, of course, we have a couple of things to do this morning. So I'm not actually going to get a chance to read this right now, which at first I was like, oh, no, I wanted to show people like what it looks like in me reading in the morning. But I wanted to show you what real life looks like. And so as much as I would love to be able to do my study first thing this morning, it's going to have to wait until later the, in this day. So I will show you what I do in the car and all throughout the day to still make that time happen where it's not forced. It doesn't feel religious and feel like a task that I have to do but a moment that I get to enjoy with my family and my kids and all that stuff so I'm done blabbing let's get along with the rest of the day okay you guys ready to hear what the uh, next portion of my uh, little Jesus time looks like don't laugh at me don't laugh at me okay in the car I think it's a great opportunity to be able to fill your spirit fill yourself with God's Word and there's two different ways you can go about doing this now this is the funny part because hold on my screen is so dirty because if you have kids I have an option for you but if you don't I have another great option for you so first the street lights I know I've shared it about it a million and seven times but it's one of the coolest resources I have ever found but re uh, street lights will read the Bible to you um, and and it has really cool interactive music. So like if it's something really intense happening, the music is like, dun, 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 dun. it's like intense. But if there's something more calming on, it's like really calming. So it's really cool. I will have both of these things linked down below. But if you guys wanna know what I'm gonna listen to in the car right now, it is going to be children's music. And I will link the kids playlist down below. I have different hymns that we listen to, but our favorite is the Wonder Kids. Kids, and you guys have probably heard these before but the reason I like these his love is deeper than the deepest ocean and wider than the widest sky he has enough love for it's because it will have the story first and then it'll be a song that follows along with it so for example one of our favorite ones my favorite ones is Jonah yes I'll put Jonah on so first it has Jonah and the whale story by a great fish and then right after we have this song that just slaps. Who did, who did, who did, who did, who did swallow, jump, 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 jump. Who did, who did, who did, who did, who did If any of you have kids, do not be afraid, for you are still able to get in your time with the Lord. I'm hesitant to admit this, but I have learned quite a lot from these stories just because sometimes there's specific stories that I feel like when you're reading through it it feels way more complicated than it is and then they're able to simplify it more and then when you go back and read it again you're like oh now I get it or oh it like helps you connect pieces that you had never connected before so I will link the kids playlist down below that is how I am going to be getting a little bit of my word with the Lord today and how I'm going to do some worship I will worship a little bit later as well but this way mom version of worship looks like Mm -hmm. 
right, so now this portion is something that I wish would have happened sooner on in the day, a little bit earlier, but like I said, I wanted this video to be like a true reflection of what our day looked like, and so it's not always exactly what I want it to be, and it's flexible, and that's the whole point of this video and the whole point of the beauty of spending your entire day with the Lord and what that can look like. So I normally do like to read my Bible first thing in the morning once the kids are up, like in the between, like breakfast is done and we're almost about to start homeschool or sometimes it's before I start breakfast and there's always like a good chunk of time that I'm able to kind of do this. So that's normally what it looks like for our family, but I kind of want to encourage other moms to try to get into the discipline of reading their Bible when their kids are awake. And the reason I want to suggest that is because our time with the Lord can be such a witness to our kids and such a witness and testimony to them what that can look like and an example. So the reason I say that is because when my kids were younger, I wouldn't do it around them. And then when I would, it felt like this really daunting task. And then I slowly started to get a little bit better at it. I would do for five minutes and then I would do 10 minutes and then 15 and then I've been able to get away. I'm not kidding you guys. I've been able to get away with reading my Bible for three hours with my kids before. Obviously that like that's happened once. It's not every single day that I have three hours to read, but there was just one particular day they were playing so well. I was just really enjoying what I was reading and I was able to just go for three hours. Yes, I would stop here and there and whatever, but it is something that you have to work at. It's something that you have to train your kids. When you do that, that is when the good stuff in life is. So it's really cool. It's not easy. Definitely take some practice. Start with you. Like, let me just ask you this. Are you able to stay on your phone and be around your kids? Because if you can, then you certainly should be able to read with them around you as well. I've actually found that if I'm in the same room as them, this is just like some practical tips. If I'm in the same room with them reading something, they are more likely to play a lot longer and play a lot better and play a lot more quietly. I don't mean to like dive deep into like independent play stuff right now. I do plan on updating you guys on their new toy rotation and what their independent play looks like because that's drastically changed as they've gotten older. So I won't take away from this portion of the video to talk about that, but that is something that we've had to really work at and they do really well, which is what they're doing right now. Anyway, I'm going to share with you guys what I do, but I also wanted to share this other thing in case you do have kids, is that in the morning, my kids will do their own Bible time. So we have these, they're called Take Along Storyteller. There's these, they're cute little things, they each have their own, and then they all come with corresponding different Bible stories. So there's Jonah and the Whale, there's Joseph's coats of many colors, the creation. There's so many. I have like a whole stack of them. And this is when they do their own quiet time and their own like Bible reading. The reason why I have them do this is because in the morning I try to have them stay calm for a little bit longer and they enjoy reading books. And so I'll whip out mine. They'll whip out theirs and they're able to sit and read. And then once they're done, they'll kind of just like sneak away and like start playing with something else. So this has been a really great practice for us as a whole to do together and the kids really enjoy it there's also songs on here and they know like I keep this easily available it's right there um, in our family room and so they get to do that so if you've been struggling with your kids not being able to sit and read on their own maybe try something like this but again these are practices that I've done with Alethea and Ari both since they could sit up it's definitely been several years in the working of practicing and disciplining and like getting them to remember how to do this because it's not it doesn't come naturally it's definitely something that's taught so not to distract from the topic but let me share with you guys my like little gear here I need to iron this but I like to keep all of my like Bible stuff in a bag I find that it's a little bit easier for me when I need to move so like if I'm in here or if I'm in the playroom I normally do it in the playroom just because that's where they tend to be or if we're gonna go to church or if I Bible study like I just know that everything I need will be in this bag and I'm not having to like repack it all the time so I'll keep my Bible I'll have a link to this one down below it's by Hosanna Revival it's the large print so it has larger prints like this and then I have margin on the sides to be able to write and then I have this case that I keep all of my stuff in now I have used a fair share of different Bible stuff Bible pens Bible highlighters like I've used quite a few and I finally found one that to me is just the chef's kiss and it's by mr. pen um, I found them on Amazon 
and they are a Christian company, which I think is really cool. And they specialize in stuff for you to be able to use for your Bible, for highlighting, for writing. What I was specifically drawn to was this set and that's because they have a nice brown one in it. And like, I know that sounds so silly, but you guys know I love brown. And so I've been able to highlight my Bible in brown. And it's just like, sometimes it's the little things and it does not bleed through. I'll show you guys in a second. And they are sponsoring this portion of today's video. So thank you to Mr. Pen. It's so cool when I get to work with amazing brands like this and their stuff is super affordable too And they gave me a 10% off link that I can share with you guys So the link will be down below and it'll get you to their Amazon Accounts and their stuff is all really affordable So this one is great because you get all these different arrays of colors But then I also really want to show you guys their pens because sometimes when you do want to write something in your Bible It can be a little frustrating when it bleeds through especially because Bibles are so thin So I love that it's like specifically made for this. Okay. So these are the ones I'm talking about. They're just called Bible pens. They have different colors, but it's really, it's like fat. I like, I'm a big fan of like fatter pens just because it's a little bit easier for me. Let's see. Okay, here I just, I want to show you what the next page looks like because I wrote on the previous one. So you can see it right there, but it's not bleeding through. If you write with other like normal pens, it'll bleed right through and then it can be a little bit distracting. And then same with the highlighting. So like I have this section highlighted and it does not bleed through. You can see it very, very faintly, but it's not bled through where you can't read right here. Okay, I've moved locations. It's a little bit easier for me to just sit in this rocking chair and do my study. And man, I will just tell you, the Lord truly will just really humble you because in my head, I was like, oh, today's a perfect day for me to show everyone like what the ideal day with the Lord looks like. And it has been such the opposite of that. It's been hard for me to make the time today. Like I have really had, I've been from one thing to another thing to another thing and we're gonna be going out of town tomorrow So anyway, I feel like I can never just finish a sentence. Mr. Penn is doing a really cool giveaway where they're giving away two people a trip to Israel So I will leave a link down below to get 10% off Mr. Penn and then as well as how you can enter the giveaway I think that is such a cool idea, but I wanted to share with you guys what I have been reading So I mentioned at the beginning of the year that this is going to be my first year. I can't no. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I feel like I just can't set my camera down without my kids putting the little fingers all over it. But this is going to be my first year that I am trying to read through the Bible. I am following a plan on the Bible app and it is going in chronological order. It has been quite a challenge. And for me, when it comes to like marking stuff off a to-do list, especially when you do the a Bible study through the YouVersion app, you like quite literally like will tap off what you've read. That can be super intimidating to me sometimes where I will kind of rush through it just to like mark it and check it off. I was super good at it doing it the first month, but then I quickly found myself just trying to get through it and just like rush through it. And I was just praying about it and I was like, well, yes, this is great that it has you do specific things on specific days. I am going to just do what I can when I can because I want to be able to read and absorb what I'm reading and not just rush through it and then look back and be like, what in the world did I just read? And so I am more behind, which is okay. It's probably gonna take me a year and a half as opposed to a year, but I actually have taken a pause and a break on that. So what I've been doing, I kind of took a little bit of a break from that just because I found this new parenting lady. Her name is Ginger and she's been such a blessing because when it comes to parenting, I find that it's really hard to find biblical parenting that isn't just like spank your child all day long. And then with gentle parenting, sometimes I feel like it's a little bit too gentle and doesn't even approach how sinful we are and changing the heart of our children. And so I've really enjoyed Ginger because everything that she shares is backed up and has the exact verse that she 
she's talking about. And so when it comes to your child lying, when it comes to your child dealing with anger, or when it comes to your child constantly telling on the other child, she has a verse for every single one of these. And so it has just been like, honestly, I felt a little bit overwhelmed at first, just having to really pray about it because it's just so oversaturated with scripture and so much scripture that I didn't even realize was in the Bible. And so that's been super eye-opening. So what I've been working on is highlighting all of those verses in my Bible. And now I am trying to memorize them because when the Bible says for you to train your child, like in order for you to teach someone, you have to be able to be in a position of teaching. I have been trying to teach and learn myself so that I can teach them. Also, this is the other Mr. Pen, black version of the pen. This is what it looks like when it's like, it's, I love it, it's so nice. Um, but I keep that inside this little journal. I'm also going to link all of like my Bible stuff that I use, um, like this notebook, this case, all the highlighters that I love from Mr. Pen and like the stuff that I use from them, my Bible, all of that, I will link down below in case you feel like you need a little refresh. Yeah, that has been what I've been working on. Don't let the Bible intimidate you. I did a devotional on the book of Ruth. Leave a comment down below if you have been here since I created that devotional. It's been almost three and a half years at this point. It's still on my website. It's free, it's seven days, and it, I just go through the book of Ruth and kind of like walk your hand and guide you through it. I have actually not looked at that study in probably two years. So it'll be really interesting to go back and see it, but that's a study you guys could do that's free. The Bible app has tons of different studies as well. Um, and I personally love the book of Matthew and just like anything in the New Testament, I'm just always more lenient towards the New Testament. The book of John, Acts, Romans. Romans is a solid book, y'all. So yeah, there's like so many places I feel like if you just start like five minutes and this is something that Joe and I talk about in the podcast too But yeah, I'm gonna do my little quiet time and then as the day Continues I'm gonna show you other ways that I spend time with the Lord one of my favorite ways is worship And it's funny because it hasn't been until recent that I have made an effort to actually like worship without Doing something else because what I used to do was be like, okay I have to clean the house or I have to do the dishes Let me just turn on some worship music and just listen to that while I'm doing it So like I was kind of doing this multitasking thing But it hasn't been until recent when I started doing worship with the kids before I put them down to bed that it would be like intentional time that I would set aside whether that was just one song or a couple songs that I would spend time in worship and it is truly just so beautiful and maybe to you you're like I already I do that but for me it was something that was new I'd always kind of multitasked it and so having it solely be a thing has just been really really nice let's uh, get into our reading today shall we I'm gonna read I actually have it highlighted 2 Corinthians 10. together. I feel like praying together is one of like the most intimate things you can do as a couple other than sex. I just read a quote. I can't remember who it was from, but it was a guy like a hundred years ago said, one of the markings of a genuine Christian is their consistent prayer life or something like that. But like that hit me. I was like, Phew. and how much more like should that be us with our spouse? I mean, Jordan shared this on our podcast before that prayer is something that he struggles with. What would you say is your like go-to biblical discipline? Like studying the scripture. 
it's not that I struggle with prayer, it's just that I don't, like, I want to do it right. I think it's done wrong so much. Not to get all preachy at the ripe hour of 8 p.m. I do think, uh, necessarily a wrong way to pray, but I, I don't think we fully capture all that talking to God really means. Well, I was just going to say, if there's any couples out there who have, are in the habit of praying together, and this is still something that we're working on too, but... I feel like it can feel really weird the first time. I remember what really helped me was <laughs> Jordan started this rule where whoever would eat our food first would have to pray before we ate the meal. And I always tend to be the first one to eat because I have no self-control when there's food in front of me. I ended up being the one that would always pray. So I got in the pattern and got more used to praying out loud like over our meals and like think if Thanksgiving when we would eat. And then I feel like that helped me become a little bit more comfortable praying around other people. And then like as I've just matured and like have to pray with my kids like that's helped a lot i don't know i feel like if you're comfortable being naked in front of your spouse you should be comfortable being naked in a emotional sense in front of them too in a spiritual sense of like praying together mm -hmm. so there's like different levels of intimacy and like just being naked in front of them isn't the only one you know like you should yeah. be able to have that portion too so i mean the lord already knows everything right as far as our mm -hmm. heart and our mind mm -hmm. even what we pray for and he already has answered our prayers before we pray them being that he knows the beginning from the end so prayer i guess if when you boil it down to its very elemental purpose is for us to align our hearts more with god's so that's kind of what we're trying to do here and mm -hmm. align our hearts with each other towards god i'll okay, pray. You pray for us. lord god we praise you for all that you are you're our good father you're our strong and steady constant. Um, you're the peace that surpasses all understanding. And you love us dearly as your children. Lord, we uh, come to you with um, all of our days, troubles and stresses and frustrations and issues, Lord, and we lay them at your feet. And we ask that by faith um, you would... Uh, give us peace of mind that we would be able to sleep tonight knowing that you're causing the world to continue on lord um, that we don't need to be in control of every situation because you are and you alone are in control of everything lord so we uh, relinquish uh, our desire for control and for uh, anything else lord that uh, rightly belongs to you lord we give that to you uh, tonight lord we ask that you would give our mind and our spirit and our heart and our souls rest tonight as we allow uh, the holy spirit to to comfort us and to minister to us and to keep us in your will um, tonight and through the, the morning lord uh, we ask for your angels to protect us and protect our household lord uh, to watch over us, Lord, as um, your messengers. And God, I thank you for Milena and for the wonderful wife and mother she is. Lord, I ask that you would strengthen her, that you give her a double portion of your blessings, Lord, and that you would use me to um, support her and to um, lead her and guide her and protect her and love her as she ought to, as you desire for her. And Lord, we thank you for our children, uh, the blessing of the inheritance that they are, Lord, that they would um, be kept safe in your will, and that you would use me and Malena, um, continue to use us to, to raise them, to know you, to love you, to fear you, and to uh, give their lives to you, Lord. We repent of our day's sins, Lord, and we ask that you would uh, yet again, give us a new day tomorrow, fresh, um, as your mercies are new every morning. And Holy Spirit, we ask that you would uh, teach us, Lord, the ways uh, to walk in them, the ways of righteousness, the ways of peace, and the ways of prosperity for your name's sake. Uh, Lord, we ask that you would continue to prune us and strip away the things in our lives that are not from you, that you do not desire from us, Lord, for us, Lord, but that you would replace them with your will and your desire for us, Lord, um, with all the decisions and things that you're doing, Lord, and the works that you're doing in our lives, Lord. We 
uh, trust you fully. Help us to uh, continue to trust you, Lord, in all things. And uh, all these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, honey. My baby's crying. Mm. Right. There you go, rocker. Okay. Good night. Mm-hmm. All right, no, well, that was a day of spending time with the Lord. I feel like it couldn't have been any more raw than what it was today just because there were so many obstacles and so much that was going on today that I really did have to make it a priority to show up and to make the time to spend time in the Word and be present with the Lord in whatever capacity that looked like. But I hope this is encouraging to you. I hope this video is a blessing to you. I hope it makes the time that you think you should be spending with the Lord less intimidating and that you not compare what my time with the Lord looks like compared to what your time with the Lord looks like, but rather you be positively influenced in a way to seek what that can look like. And just because this is what it looks like for me doesn't mean that that's what it needs to look like for you. My goal is for it to just be an inspiration and for you to see that it doesn't just have to be you sitting down in a chair for two and a half hours in the morning drinking a coffee and a quarter with a beautiful notebook and beautiful pens and highlighters and this whole beautiful spiel and your bible doesn't need to look like a whole pinterest aesthetic of like colors and this is like you know i don't really know how to do calligraphy writing is my handwriting my pages I'll write down what I feel like I need to write down. It's not like this huge, beautiful thing. So, yeah, anyway. But if you do need some beautiful highlighters, I will link Mr. Pen down below. My link will get you 10% off, and it'll take you straight to Amazon. So, again, thank you to them for working on a portion of today's video. Love you guys. God bless, and I'll see you next week. Bye.